Okay, let me refresh you guys' memory about this vehicle. Bought it about a year ago. Fairly clean on the outside um, because it set up for so long. Just shocked at the condition of the outside. Uh, the person who bought it had it towed and the hatch was left open and uh, the wind got up underneath it and pulled it back and destroyed the hatch. Luckily, that was all that was messed up. But a fairly decent car. But what I didn't realize was how badly rusted out it was under the hood section. Just blown away that how that part can get so uh, rusted out. And I'll show you guys that in a second. Because um, I'm waiting to do the, um, put the motor in. The motor is ready. It's ready to go. Um, ready to be installed. And try to do all the rust repairs first and clean up underneath the cab. But here's the state of the vehicle um, underneath the hood. I don't know if some moisture got under there or what happened because it was rusted out pretty bad in the sections that I cut out. And um, I just was mind blown at how bad it was rusted. Um, one of the worst ones I've seen, despite the exterior being so clean, uh, the, in, the underneath the cab was just terrible. Out of all five Mustangs I've had, Mustang 2s, this was by far the worst. So a little after I got the vehicle, I just started cutting out all the rusted sections. I knew I had replacement parts or patch panels from another vehicle um, that I had. And I just started cutting out all the rust. And I was planning on getting to it way sooner than I am now. But the black car, due to the paint situation with that car, holding me up. Um, I'm way behind schedule on this car. So um, my goal is to kind of get all the rust repairs out within the next week. Like I'm really pushing to get all the rest repairs done and all underneath that cap uh, nice and and, and really making it look really nice and paint it back a nice white and um, just drop the engine in, get it running real nice and put all the, the fenders and stuff back on and kind of take it and get a paint correction and get the hatch back white and um, just be a nice, nice car, nice rust free car. But here I'm cutting with this uh, dual saw which is an amazing saw i'll show that more in this video but this is nearly a year ago that i was doing this and cut this out and just cutting all the rust out let me show you guys the other side real quick let me flip the camera over post me cutting that out but yeah i cut out the section that was rusted out kind of going over a little farther than i should have but i just wanted to make sure all the rust um was removed and i can just add some fresh metal there I thought I had a section or a video of me cutting the other side out. Um, I can't find it though, but as you guys will see in a second, you can look at the other side now. Flash the camera over there and see the section I cut out over there. A couple different sections I cut out over there. So I got three kind of major repairs. Not major, these are kind of minor, but three decent sized repairs. Uh, so this thing can be uh, rust free and I can uh, make it look decent. But now that you guys have seen this let's jump into the video and i'll show you guys what i'm doing right now with this particular car while i'm waiting on a few critical pieces for the black mustang so i can start wrapping up um, or expediting the progress on me finishing it okay guys time for us to show the white and blue mustang some love um you guys can see i got all these brush repairs i gotta make and I'm trying to do this now before it gets cold out. At least make the repairs for the rust. And um, got that section to cut out. The battery section was rusted out really bad in this car. All, everything else was okay. Oh, except over here. It was messed up over here as well. So that's the more larger repair. And this is uh, not that bad. So this is what I'm gonna start on today before it get cold out and um, make this all nice up, real nice under here. So I can drop that engine in here um, and get this one pretty much done. It's time for me to set my welder up right now. Full tank of gas, about to start. Really in So let me get this piece and show you all this piece. Also about to make a video real quick, a short video on the Mustang 2 Cruise Control. All right, so. Here's that piece. I shouldn't be that far off. I'm quite sure I gotta fit it like a puzzle. And there's this piece. So it's gonna take some fitting. 
but this is, I want to do this first. So we're going to do that first. Let's see how it fit. Let's clean up right here first. Let's get this one. Man, this is pretty close. Pretty close. I can't come down here as you guys can see us tilted up and I'll show you guys why, but man, it's it's, it's super close. You guys can see this overlapping because here I got a high point. I got a high point between there. I gotta get cut down some. See, it's right here. It's not allowing it to come back a pull back so I'm probably gonna trim off here not off this yeah I'm gonna trim off here to get that out the way so let me manipulate this um to get this fitting this should fit almost like a puzzle once I'm able to go over a little bit this should be nice all right let me um get this to fit in like a puzzle so I can start welding. I'm excited about welding. I haven't welded in a minute and I love it. So, so the first thing I want to trim is right here. See that gap? This is not allowing me to close in. You guys can see how far I'm shifted off. So I got to trim where exactly kind of where I marked it at off the red patch panel. Guys, I was just thinking to make these cuts super precise, you know, I got the angle grinders. I was gonna use, got a, a rather a five inch disc opposed to a four and a half inch. And uh, I'm gonna grind when I weld, of course I'll grind the surface move. But to make the cut super precision, to, to just cut off what I need uh, as accurate as possible, I'm gonna use a plasma cutter. Just gotta be careful if we gotta change the tip. Yeah, I'm gonna change. This is fine. This should be good. Let me grab some new tips though. I'm gonna use a plasma cutter because that'll allow me to, to trim precisely. Super trim precisely. But I gotta be careful because you, you gotta hold steady with it because if you don't, uh, you'll cut, you'll make all kind of crazy cuts. I'm not that far off, so this will allow me to trim super precisely. So we're gonna use the plasma cutter. For that, let me get some more tips. Let me go grab my stand first and foremost. So we're gonna change the head of this. longer tip than the one I had on here. So I want to be as precise as possible with this and I can't mess up. I just want to trim and go. Trim in place. Trim in place so this can fit new, like a puzzle. Like I'm, I'm right there. I made the cuts. Got to fit like a puzzle now. We got air plugged in. But um, this work off 230 volts and uh, 115, so I'm gonna use 115 right now. This is the adapter to make it run. I got both. I made a special plug for this. Show you guys that. Uh, 
Um, I, my extension cord, I can't find my extension cord. It's in one of the sheds somewhere I've been looking for. It allows me to, to run this cord across over here. I got both ran. It's over here. That's not it. That's it right here. That's the outlet right there. I think that's for the compressor. Oh, that's my extension cord. That's my extension cord, guys. That's the extension cord. It's wrapped over here somewhere. That's the extension cord. I'm tripping. I've been looking for it and it's been plugged in all along. You get this stuff cleaned up over here too. Some stuff. So my extension cord over there, I'm gonna see how 115 works before I run it, but it's already plugged in. It's already ready for me. The extension cord goes into this. So we are gonna see how this works first. Off of here, got a 20 amp there. But, uh, so we, let's just see how it works like this first. If it blows or fuse, run that stitcher cord instantly. Cause I'm gonna be using this thing today a lot. Okay guys, I'm getting there. I'm not that far off. Not that far off. Not that far off. Let me just keep messing with it. I'll be right back. Okay guys, we're getting close. I'm hitting here now. And although the plasma cutter don't have a straight edge like the angle grinder or metal cutoff wheel, it does this effortlessly. You know, these ridges, as steady as you can hold your hand, the straighter the cut is gonna be. And I braced myself real good. And I'm almost there. I'm just hitting here now. So I'm going to open this up some. I think I'm pretty much straight back here. Just got to open that. Open. Got to slice this some. Got to come on an angle. To keep inching back. Just going back millimeters at a time. And getting it. And I should be fitting. As you guys can see, I'm not that far off. When I go over, I'm going to get it as close as possible. So let me slice this. I actually can take the angle grinder and do that now. Okay, I think pretty much got a straight edge now. All along now. This should be close. All right, let me fit this. And see what we got. Alright, and close and close and close. 
Now I'm hitting right here. I'm gonna pull over a little bit more. That's about nice. That's nice. That's nice. And I gotta trim some of this. That's gonna fit. You can see how it overlaps here. So I'm gonna trim some of that off and we should be good. Let me make a line back here to see where I'm at too. Okay, look how much I got trimmed off. So I gotta be to that line. I'm gonna use my Snap-on dry grinder. Pretty much got it exactly where I wanted it. I'm gonna weld the bottom. This is flush. That's what we want. So I'll, I'll weld the bottom first. I'll manipulate the bottom, and then I'll uh, straighten this out. Just gotta hold about one clamp over here. All this is gonna line up perfect. Everything gonna line up perfect. When I shift it over. I just want to get the bottom in first, so I can work with it. Put everything back in place and shift this back, and then it should be all good. So let me sand. This down to the bare metal. But the bottom, we're gonna do the, I'm gonna do the bottom first. I don't need to try and cut it no more right now. Gotta do the same with the other side when I do the other side. Just takes time to get the fit as close as possible. And then the front part comes in when you go to welding in all these welds. So, get that stitched in, nice. The metal was kind of rusted here, so I was blowing through it, so I have to build up right there. When I sand that down and hit that a little bit more again, you won't see that. So, we're stitched in at the bottom. Uh, now, I'm gonna do that, line this up. Then I have to manipulate that and uh, line all this up and tack it in, and then I'll just go for it. Once I tack it in place. But, yeah, we're stitched in. All right, guys, I'm gonna put in at work. Been out here for some hours, getting it right. Look at this, look at that, look at that. That's it, gotta do that side. Look. Look at the symmetry. Look at everything. It has to be back right. Look how the wheels came through the back side. How even that is. That's got to be back right. This has to be back right. And now I'm here. Yeah. Look, gap here. I'm about to make that look amazing. But this has to be perfect. I have to make sure that it's perfect. I have to line it up. And this had a dent in it. And I hate I didn't pull that dent out. 
this was off, I didn't see it. So I pushed this in, I hammered this in, I contoured that, this piece to match this piece. I contoured it in as if it was on here. Look at that, look how even it is. Then I'm gonna finish off right there. Close that gap up. All right, let me get done with this and I'll be back and show you guys. A lot of work to get this back right. All right, done with that. Everything has to be black right. Maybe a little bit more right there. Cause when I grind this down, it's gonna be flat. Read about all my shapes. Just like grind it down, it just have a good, like a smooth transition. Like so. All right, as the evening falls, done with this side, I have to make a run. Probably would have been done maybe a couple hours ago, but completely done. I gotta grind it down, but I'll wait till I finish this side and grind them down at the same time. But uh, look at this. All the pieces back. Everything, I'll make sure everything was there. So when I grind it down, it's gonna be a flat surface and everything will be symmetrical. Got all my lines. That has to be perfect. When I sand these wheels down, it's gonna be all good. So I even put that dent in here. So it'll be like, that was there already when I'm done. That was, this was already dented in. So I kind of mashed that to contour it. So I'll be sanding these wheels down. I even put that little metal piece back right there. So I'll, Sand all that down, put all under there. But yeah, we in, and it's gonna be nice when we when I sand those wheels down. And uh, clean all this up. Probably gonna remove. I am gonna remove that harness. Pull that harness back out of my way as a. Clean up everything, pressure wash it. I'll use some brush before I'm again, kind of paint it back. The white that's on here, paint all this back that white, and then put everything back, and then drop the mold in. That's the go. So tomorrow, that piece for tomorrow's video. Um, also, I got two videos coming out for the black car, so um, they'll be about to drop too. So just going. Back to back to back to back. It'd be funny if I have both of these ready at the same time. And they can both take a nice drive together. And that'd be dope. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Terrence, I'm out.